Hey guys, we are back with some more New Jersey Devils franchise mode, and in this one, we are going to continue the year three simulation, but not before we make a trade, because we have been struggling right where we have been for the majority of this GM mode so far, and that's goaltending. Robin Leonard only with an 897. Now, we're not going to be trading Leonard as he did uh, help us win the Stanley Cup. As a matter of fact, he was a big part of why we won the Stanley Cup in the previous playoffs, 935 save percentage in 22 games. We are not getting rid of him, but we are going to be trading Mackenzie Blackwood. He has been proven, at least in this GM mode, to not be a good goaltender. Because as we take a look at his save percentages from this simulation year so far, 892 save percentage in year number one in 36 games. In 28 games last year, 888 save percentage in so far in seven games this year. 890 save percentage. He has not managed to get above 900 at all. So, and then even when he was in the playoffs, they're uh, in there for us in the playoffs last year. 833 save percentage. Four goals allowed on 24 shots. It's just not good enough. So we're going to have to trade him. And I do have a trade in mind. So we are going to make it right now. As we go to trade players, we will be trading with the Minnesota Wild, as they are currently definitely in rebuild mode, 6-13-2. Yeah, that's a rebuild if I've ever seen one. And they also, what they also have is an aging goaltender in Devin Dubnik. Now, he's not on the greatest contract, two years left at 3.575. However, he does have some pretty good numbers so far this year. And for the Minnesota Wild, who are losing a lot of games... You got to think on a bad team with those kinds of numbers, he'll, he should be able to at least do much better on our team. And obviously, again, we're not trying to push Leonard out here, but he just hasn't been good. And this is a contending team. We need to get back to the playoffs. If we don't get back to the playoffs the year after we win the Stanley Cup, then that's just embarrassing. So we, we got to make this work. And we're obviously going to be giving them Blackwood. Blackwood's a young goaltender. Still got quite a bit of his career ahead of him. He's been struggling here the entire time, but maybe he just needs a change of scenery. Maybe he, you know, maybe just never liked it here in New Jersey, at least in this uh, particular save file. So we will be sending him to Minnesota. And obviously this is not all we're giving up because Mackenzie Blackwood, at least in this universe so far, is a much worse goaltender than he was expected to be. And Devin Dubnik, I mean, he has he has a history of not having the greatest save percentage. But during year number one, he had a 9-10 on a, once again, terrible Minnesota Wild team. So I'm hoping that his save percentage so far this year and his save percentage in year number one is indicative of what he'll be able to do uh, with us in the regular season. With Blackwood will be our most recent draft pick, Voracek. He's at 63 overall, 18 years of age. He has two goals so far in 14 games played in the Extra Liga. Now, you might be thinking why we would be trading him. Well, we don't exactly need him because we have Michael Vukojevic as a 79 overall. He's still with the Kitchener Rangers, so we'll obviously, we, we won't be able to play him this year, but Next year, I'm expecting this guy to make the jump to the NHL. He may be an 80, 81, possibly 82 overall, depending on the type of growth he has. He looks like he's killing it so far down there in Kitchener. And as far as Voracek goes, I mean, he's effectively the same player, but Vukojevic, he's only two years older, and he's much, much further along in his development than Voracek is. So I figure for a rebuilding team, Voracek is a, he's a good top four defensive prospect for a team that may need him. And especially, you know, I, I think their best prospect here is, it looks like Ortmeier and Thorson, and they, it doesn't look like they have too much trade value on them. And obviously they have Dumba, they have Niku, they have a pretty solid defensive core, but it just doesn't look like that they're a team that is going to be able to recover, especially with a 6-13-2 record. So, Mackenzie Blackwood and Voracek to Minnesota for Devin Dubnik proposed trade. There you go. So, obviously, we gave up a little bit of the future, but not too much of it. Because 
This is a problem that we desperately needed to fix. Now we are a contending team. We have to defend our Stanley Cup uh, champion title. So we went out there and got Devin Dubnik to hopefully help us out with our goaltending issues. So we are getting Dubnik in there, and I will start out with Dubnik for right now. I think we're going to take auto-rotate goalies off, and we'll do manual rotations throughout the sim, because Leonard's just been, yeah, not not great. But I do want him to be fresh for the playoffs. So I think we'll do a 2-2 two to -two loss ratio sort of thing there, and we're going to see how these four lines work out as well. We have Gusev on the first line now. And, I mean, obviously, these four, Hall, Hughes, Heischer, and Bratt, were all producing, but everyone else seemed to slow down. So I think it's for the best if we sh try to shuffle around the right wings a little bit, get Paul Mary down there on the third line with Boquist. Bo Boquist, he's been doing well. Uh, Coleman, not so much, unfortunately, with four points, unfortunately, for him. Uh, but he is on the penalty kill, so I don't think he'll have any morale issues, or at least I don't think so. So we're going to see how this team simulates... With the new goaltender switch, obviously Tanev could be doing a little bit better. He's already a minus four in four games played, but we'll see, once again, how much Devin Dubnik is able to affect our sim. I would like to get Kirill Jamnov back in there at some point this season, but as of right now, we have been very shaky, so I want to have our best defensive players in there. That's why Tanev is in there instead of Jamnov. So, we are going to get back into the sim. All right, auto-rotate goalies are now off. So we will be rotating once again on a 2-2 two to -two win-loss ratio with Dubnik and Leonard. So let's get right back into the sim with games against Philly and against Tampa. So let's take this a couple of games at a time here. And we have against Philly a trade from Calgary. Lundell and a first for Brody, Backland, and Komarov. No, absolutely no way. 2-1 uh, loss, so at least we didn't let in too many goals. I'll take that as a positive sign. Would have preferred the win, obviously. And there's a win against Tepo, so uh, not too shabby. Go another game against Calgary here. Uh, Goose, he's he says he's sorry for how he's playing out there. All right. So Goose has <laughs> had a lot of concerns so far this year. He says he doesn't think he is performing to the best of his abilities. Well, he wasn't up there with the top point scorers when we last checked our stats for the team, so I would tend to agree with him. But I, that being said, I am confident in his abilities because we've seen him in the past, right? He's had two consecutive 70-point seasons, so I think he'll be able to get out of it. And he appreciates the vote of confidence. All right. Good to know, Goose. You just got to gotta perform. <laughs> now you got to prove me right. So as we get into the game against Calgary, we are 10, 8, and 4, and we win it in a shootout 5 to 4. All right, I'll take it. Not the prettiest win, obviously, with four goals against, but still, it's two points in the books, and it's one more step towards the playoffs. So we have a second, a fourth, and a headstrom for a third and a third. No thanks. And we have a 5 to 4 shootout loss against the Canucks there. So we're, we're getting into some shootouts here quite a bit, and we once again let up four goals, so I think I'm going to take out Dubnik. Let's check out his stats so far, though. So let's see. He's got, well, that's his total for the year. What's his total for us? Uh, 906. Okay, so, well, it, it's better than Leonard's done so far, but, you know, it's a small sample size, so we'll see how that holds up throughout the season. But we're going to stay true to our 2-2 two -two win-loss ratio here, and we're going to go with Robin Leonard. And for the next two games against the Anaheim Ducks and the Calgary Flames. So, game against Anaheim, they're not too good. And we have a 1-0 shutout loss against them. And meanwhile, we win 5-3 against Calgary. So, we're still quite all over the place. A good defensive performance there in Anaheim, but no goals to show for it. And then we had five goals against Calgary, three goals against. Uh, yeah, I'll, give, I'll definitely give Leonard another game against Buffalo. See what happens here. A 3 2 loss. Uh, we've been playing well for the most part, but again, that's two losses in three games. Gotta give Dubnik some more time. So Leonard has his save percentage back up to a 903 from those past three games, so that's good. But once again, we're just gonna see what Dubnik can do. Uh, maybe one of them gets on a hot streak. Maybe this competition, internal competition between the two, maybe that's what pushes us, bleh, pushes us through to the playoffs. 
So as we face Tampa and Columbus, these should be a couple of good tests here. Tampa, we have a 3-2 victory against them. And Wayne Simmons, unfortunately, is injured with a sprained ankle until December 18th. I don't think that's too long from now. That might be a week and a half to two weeks from now. We'll get Palms on that second line. Well, actually, you know what? We could get Severson, <laughs> Severson back on the four core as maybe we put Jamnov back on defense. Yeah, I think, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to take Severson out in favor of Jamnov. And then we'll put J uh, Severson back on the second line where he was last year. Because that did seem to work out pretty well. I mean, obviously, we won the Stanley Cup with that combination. And it wasn't just for a few games, you know. It was quite a handful of games that we used this combination of Brat, Heesher, and Severson. And it worked out pretty well. So let's try it out again. And let's just make sure that... All the special teams are the way they should be. And it looks like they are. Alright, so let's get back to the sim. And we have a 6-2 win against Columbus. You love to see it. Games against Edmonton and Montreal. Can we turn this season around? As an overtime loss, 5-4. So you let up another 4 goal regulation. Or 4 goals in regulation. And then a 4-3 shootout loss. Uh, I mean, they're, they're overtime and shootout losses. But they haven't been the prettiest. And Wayne Simmons is back. So we'll get him back in the lineup. I'm not sure where. Maybe we take out Armia. How's Armia done? Nine points so far in 31 games. Is he has been doing well defensively? Yeah, he's been doing all right. Not the greatest, considering his physicality, the, uh, the number of hits that he had last year. He had 78, presumably at Montreal's fourth line. And he only has 16, roughly... Halfway through this, well, not halfway through the season, but he has half the amount of hits that he has games played. So I think we'll take out Armia for right now and we'll put in Simmons on the fourth line. And Dubnik's save percentage is up to a 909. So, I mean, it's, I mean, that's total though. Actually, his save percentage with us is at a 902. Mm. Man, is it something with our system? It might be something with our system because for whatever reason, every goaltender that we've had so far has struggled. Include, that includes Schneider. So if Dubnik finishes this season with be, anything below 900, we might have to look into either a goaltender coach change or a defensive systems change because it is just, for whatever reason, our goaltenders just can't seem to get it going. We'll get Leonard in there for a couple of games against Carolina and Detroit. We have a win against Carolina and a win against Detroit. All right, so a couple of good games there. We'll leave Leonard in for Columbus and the Rangers. And the Minnesota Wild have fired head coach Daryl Gomez. And Taro Solani will be injured until December 29th. We'll just do best lines for the AHL. Columbus, we have a 4-3 win. And the Rangers will be a 4-1 loss. You hate to see it. We'll give them one more game against Washington. And that'll be... Taro Solani coming back. <laughs> Best lines. And a 4-3 win. All right. One more game against Washington. Once again, a back-to-back. -back, a home-and-home. But it'll be, it'll be a 5-1 win. So Leonard's starting to go on a bit of a tear here. We'll leave him in. Uh, keep it going. Against his former team, the New York Islanders. We have an injury to Pavel Zaka. You hate to see it. Only for about a week, though. till January 7th. I believe it is already January 1st. So we will fill in Zach Smith here. All right. Good. Good. Goose is going now. So he just needed to be reunited with Hughes and Hall. I think Hall slowed down a little bit. But Hughes, he is producing as much as ever. He is a point per game, slightly above point per game. So let's just keep these line combos the way they are. And we'll keep going. Game against the Islanders, that'll be a 3-2 loss. But he's riding a bit of a hot streak. So we'll leave him in there for one more game. And we make it 20 12 and what was that? Seven. And of course, as we check Gusev's stats, Goose is now injured with a mild concussion until January 7th. That's not too long. I think that's only a couple of days. So we'll get Armia back in. I guess on the first line for right now. Or right, no, let's get Palms. Yeah, let's get Palms on the first line. And we have a two to one win against Toronto. I knew my hunch was right to keep Leonard in there. So let's keep going. Game against Philly. We have another trade. A first, a first, Hestrom for Patch Ready and a third. No thanks. We're playing fine right now. Don't need any trades. And Taro Solani has been injured once again. <laughs> okay, very nice. And a OT loss against Philly. You know what? Again, I like the tear that Leonard has been on for the most part. 
We'll leave him in there for another game against Boston. And multiple players are now eligible to be dressed. So I guess that's Zaka and Gusev. So we'll get Zach Smith out. And we will put Zaka back in on the fourth line. And then instead of Armia, we'll get Goose back in. And that'll be a 3-2 shootout win against Boston. Game against Florida. We have a injury to Nikita Gusev. <laughs> With a sore shoulder until January 20th. Man, we just, we just put him back in and he gets re-injured the next game. So we'll get Armia back in. And Palms back up to the first line. There you go. Bunch of micromanaging. And we have a 4-3 win against Florida. So we've been playing much better as of recent. See, the thing is, I don't know how necessary that trade for Dubnik was, right? It obviously, at the time, it seemed like it was necessary because both our goaltenders were struggling, but now Leonard's putting together uh, a pretty significant point streak here with that that uh, win against Florida, and then you have a shootout win against Boston, OT loss against Philly, so we still got a point, then a win, so we're on a four-game point streak right now. Let's see if Leonard can keep that going. I'll leave him in for another two games here, and let's see what happens against Winnipeg and Pittsburgh. Winnipeg's good, and we get the 3-1 to W and the 3-2 to W. We are on a roll now. Keep it going, Leonard. Please, please just keep it going. And Toronto, 4-2 to loss. I'll leave him in there for one more game. I just want to see if that was a fluke or not. Let's see. Game against LA. Taro Zolani is back. Best lines. And a 6-5 to OT loss. Okay, so we're, we're getting Leonard out of there. We're going to put Dubnik back in. Jack Hughes is on a roll. And we're in third in our division. So... It's definitely a pretty good situation right now, but we want to make sure it stays that way. So we're going to get Dubnik back in because Leonard has been struggling the past couple of games. He's up to a 9-11 save percentage now. So that's, I believe, the highest save percentage we've seen from him all season. And Dubnik looks to improve on his 902 save percentage, I believe, that we saw from him previously. We have a back-to-back -back here, but Dubnik has been resting for a while, so he will play both of them. And let's see what happens here. And Goose is back, so hopefully, as we get him in, get him back in here, hopefully he does not get re-injured in either of these back-to-back -back games. As we get him back onto the first line, and just make sure the power play units are the way they should be, and yes, they are. So, game against Vegas, and a 4-3 shootout win, and a 4-2 win. Very nice. So, now we have our bye week. So, we don't play again until San Jose. And game against San Jose, that will be a 3-1 to one win. So, luckily we have two reliable goaltenders now, it appears. Obviously, you had Leonard with that hot streak up until Toronto and LA. And now you got Dubnik on a three-game winning streak against Vegas, Arizona, and the Sharks. So, we're 27-13-9. I would say, at this point in the season, and it's now pretty clear that that trade for Dubnik was necessary. I'm going to say it right now. Because Dubnik has come up clutch with some pretty big wins that I don't think Mackenzie Blackwood would have had. And look at that. He's now back up to a 9-15 save percentage. That's probably in the top 15 or 20 of the league in goaltenders. Because as we saw in the last episode, uh, the goaltending in this game, or at least in this save file, has not been good at all for anybody, really. Besides a select few goaltenders. So he is doing... His job right now and glad we made that trade so now basically all we need to do is keep our position and really not give any teams anything we'll go another couple of games with Dubnik in there we'll give him Vegas and Carolina and we have a 4-3 OT victory against Carolina and a 3-1 victory against the Canes very nice and Florida and Pittsburgh we're starting to turn it on here. We really are. OT loss. That's fine. Uh, trade alert to Winnipeg. Two thirds and Derek Puglia and to Columbus, Stanley and Proc up. All right. So trading prospects there. And we have two losses in a row a 4 3 OT loss and a 5 3 regulation loss. So we will get Robin Leonard back in. And look at that. We are three points out of first in our division. So once again, that trade, I would say, helped us out. And obviously, we're getting some help from the OT losses as well, <laughs> given that we have uh, seven more of them than the Carolina Hurricanes do. But still, you know, every point counts, so let's just keep the good times going. And obviously, we lost those last two games, but I'm very confident that our team will be able to come back from that, from those two losses, 
especially the way we've been performing recently with the exception of those two games. So, game against the Rangers and Toronto. And a trade alert to Boston, Muzzin, a fourth, and Coburn. And to Ottawa, Surdiff, and a first. And we lose against the Rangers 5-2. to two. That is unfortunate. And Toronto, we have another trade. Barbashev, Ryan, and Condon to Minnesota. And then to Ottawa are Jonas Brodeen and John Merrill. And a 5-4 to four loss against Toronto. So we're <laughs> starting to get back into some bad habits here, unfortunately. Especially with... It looks like uh, Leonard's in there at the moment. Yeah, Leonard has not had a good past couple of games, so we'll get Dubnik back in because he was on a pretty good streak there up until those last two games against Pittsburgh and who else was it? It was Florida. So games against LA and Nashville. Let's see if he could do any better here. And if he can't, then we might be in a hole once again. And to Dallas, we have two seconds and Bjugstad. And then to Pittsburgh, we have Honka and a second. Pretty interesting trade there. A forward for a defenseman and a couple of picks involved as well. Uh, Fabian Zetterlund, that is the Miners. We'll do best lines and a couple of wins in a row there. So we'll keep rolling with Dubnik. And once again, Dubnik has gotten us some wins here that Mackenzie Blackwood, unfortunately, would not have had. So that was definitely a very good trade. Uh, I'll say for the final time. <laughs> And to Ottawa, we have a second, Riddick and Goldobin. And to Vancouver, we have Jonas Brodin. So Jonas Brodin traded twice in the past couple of weeks here. As we have a game against Pittsburgh, nice 3 to nothing shutout victory and a 5-2 to two win against Ottawa. So we're definitely going to keep rolling with Mr. Devin Dubnik here. Uh, another trade. To Columbus, we have Hepo Niemi and a second. And then to Florida, we have Cam Atkinson and a fourth. And Zetterlin is back, just best lines. And Nashville, uh, Nikita, <laughs> jeez, Goose, what are you doing, my man? Gotten injured quite a few times this year. That is, the, I believe, the third time already in this video as he is injured with a sore foot until March 6th. That is unfortunate once again. So we will get Armia back in and Palms back on the first line. And game against Nashville, 2-1 to one win. There you go. And against Vancouver, a 5-4 win. So we're picking up the Ws. Devin Dubnik has gotten us some very clutch wins here. That's what I believe, yeah, that is a six-game winning streak currently that we are on. We are 35-16-10 and 10, heading into the trade deadline. I feel pretty safe about this team. For every losing streak we've had, we've had two winning streaks. And I think we're, yeah, we're, we're pretty set to go into the playoffs here as, again, obviously this is the roster basically, anyway, that won the Stanley Cup last year. And we have two really good goaltenders to rely on, not only for this regular season, but for the playoffs. So let's just review the stats, and then we will get into the playoffs. Jack Hughes with 66 points so far. Oh my goodness, he's a now a 90 overall at 20 years of age. Look out, NHL. <laughs> and Nikita Gusev, he definitely has rebounded 29 goals so far on the season, and the season is only about a th three fourths of the way done, so he could potentially get to 40. You never know. I mean, he's done it before, right? He's gotten, yeah, 41 goals in each of the past two seasons, so I would not surprise me if he got at least close to 40 uh, this season. And, and he's also missed some time due to injury as well, so uh, pretty impressive for him. Taylor Hall has fallen back in terms of his. Point production, but we've been getting wins, so I can't really complain too much. Nico Heischer with 48 points. P.K. Subban with 48 points as well. I mean, we just have such a good team. Jesper Bratt with 38 points. Kyle Palmieri with 36. Jesper Boquist with 34 points in his rookie season on the third line. So, he's having a good year. Only two power play points. So, 32 of his points come from even strength. Huh. Is that, uh, is that second power play unit dead? Wow, it must be, because Nico only has five power play points. Subban, only six. Brat, only six. Palmieri, only four. Coleman has a one. Uh, Butcher has eight, but he's on the first power play, I believe. And then Taylor Hall has 18 points. Yeah, that second unit. That second power play unit must be dead. Because, <laughs> I mean, there's a huge difference between... Uh, Taylor Hall, Gusev, and Hughes' point production on the power play. And then Nico, Subban, Brat, Palmer, and Boquist. These five are all in the second unit. 
So if we can figure out a way to get that second unit going without affecting the first unit at all, that'd be great. But at the same time, I'm not going to get fussy about it because we have been winning games more other, more often than not. So checking face-offs here, Nico with a 53.3, Zajac with a 52.9, Boquist with a 51%, and Hughes finally getting up there in face-off percentage with a 50.4. I believe that is a career high so far. And yes, indeed it is. The past two seasons, he had 47%. Looks like he is improving in the face-off dot in a tremendous way. And uh, yeah, we're looking pretty good here as far as hits go. Hall, Palmieri, Subban, all over 100. Manson and Coleman are very close with 99. Uh, 86 for Simmons, 71 for Severson. Zaka with 62. Hughes with 55. So Hughes, even though not much of a physical player, still showing a physical side of him. Zajac 49, and then all these guys down here. So as we get into the takeaways to giveaways, he sure... He has been amazing. 114 takeaways to 57 giveaways. Hughes with 69 to 34, 68 to 41 for Hall, uh, 34 to 42 for Bokvist, 32 to 26 for Paul Mary, 29 to 30 for Gusev, 28 to 31 for Bratt, 27 to 39 for Coleman, 26 to 25 for Simmons, 25 to 29 for Zajac, 23 to 33 for Severson. And then 23 to 20 for Zaka, 21 to 57 for Manson, 21 to 58 for Subban, 19 to 39 for Butcher, 18 to 15 for Armia, 16 to 37 for Ty Smith, 8 to 26 for Tanev, 6 to 36 for Jamnov, and nothing, nothing for Zach Smith. And in goal, you have Leonard with the 908 save percentage so far on the season, and then Dumnik with the 915. So we're really, I, again, there's not much change that we need to make. So we're just going to go right ahead past the trade deadline and we'll see if we can repeat as Stanley Cup champions. But first, let's check the team stats because we haven't done that in a while. And I want to see if our penalty kills improve because I believe last we checked it was at an 80. And before that, it was at a 75. So let's see if it's up to about an 85 as of recent. That'd be great, actually. Uh, so we're at a 3.33 goals for per game. Pace, that is pretty good. Goals against per game, we are at a 2.9. Top half of the division, not going to complain there. Power play, 21.4 in the top half of the division. We could be doing better, especially with that second unit, but I'm not going to complain about it too much. And yep, there it is. Penalty kill up to an 83.1. So as of recent, that's probably around an 86 or an 87%. So I know last time we are 6, 3, and 1. No reason to stop. Well, actually, I do have to send out the scout, but uh, other than that, we will continue on this simulation with the rest of the regular season. And look at that. So far, Anton Lundell leading the Binghamton Devils with 51 points, and they're currently in second in the Northern Division. That is definitely the best the Binghamton Devils have been so far in this GM mode. Let's actually take a look at what he's done a little bit more in depth, in depth. and he's now a 79 overall. So he should end up being ready for next year. I mean, he's technically ready now, but you know we're on a roll, so there's no need to uh, rush him into the NHL. He'll be ready when he's ready, and I would prefer for him to be a stud instead of a career fourth liner. So we'll leave him in the NHL for, that, for right now, but let's take a little look at some of his more in-depth stats. So he's got a really good face-offs so far, 52.15 on the face-off circle. 42 hits, and he, he's really good defensively. Yeah, he's looking promising as Anton Lundell. So, once again, not making any trades. We will go right past the trade deadline and face the Chicago Blackhawks and the Ottawa Senators as we look to continue toward the playoffs. And we have a 4-2 loss against Chicago and a 3-2-1 loss against Ottawa. I'll give Dubnik one more game, only because I know that he could get on a hot streak if we leave him in. And he's getting better. He went from the four to two to three to one to two to one. So he's starting to get a little hot. It's just his his offense isn't helping him. So we're going to go ahead one more game. We'll see what he could do against Colorado. And that'll be a three two loss. All right. So we're not really seeing the results there. Now we will change out into Robin Leonard. Just thought I would leave him in there because he does have the tendency. Does Dubnik 
to get hot when he starts multiple games in a row. So we'll get Leonard in, and we'll see what Leonard can do against Winnipeg and Minnesota. And Nikita Gusev is fully healed, <laughs> so we'll get him back in. A lot of micromanagement here, and we'll get Armia out. And, of course, the lines are back to the way they were, so hopefully we'll get some more scoring going. And, of course, as we get the lines back to the way they were, we get a 5-3 to three loss against Winnipeg, but a 7-2 to win against Minnesota. So we'll go another two games here. We'll let Leonard try to get hot like we did with Dubnik. So the Islanders against his former team once again. We have a 6-3 to three loss and then a 5-4 to four OT win. I'll give him one more game. I want to see if he can build on that win. Maybe it build his confidence a little bit. 3-2 hmm. to two loss. Yeah, we'll take him out. And, oh, we are now in a wild card, unfortunately. We need to really start focusing on getting some Ws here because we're not exactly in the worst spot considering the Atlantic division is terrible outside of the top three. Yeah, the Lightning and the Senators aren't clinching any kind of wild card spot here. And luckily as well, the Islanders are way outside the playoffs of the wild card spot. So it's really just us and the Capitals battling for whoever's going to be higher ranked in the standings. As long as we don't lose every single game from now on, we should be in the playoffs. But let's, you know, let's not chance anything. Let's just take this last set of games by the reins and get, I would say, let's try for seven wins out of what's remaining. Ten games? Let's try to get at least seven wins. So there's a loss against Boston. Devin, <laughs> of course, injured arm until March 25th. At least it's not that long. We'll just get Leonard back in, but... Yeah, just an uh, inopportune time for him to get injured. Luckily, we did sign Darling, so he will be the backup for right now to Robin Leonard. And should he have to get in there, we have a pretty reliable backup. And a game against St. Louis, 1-0 loss, and then a 3 to nothing win over Tampa. So, I go a couple more games here, obviously, with Leonard, because Dubnik isn't going to be back for a couple of days here, and now he's back. <laughs> so, unfortunately, it looks like Leonard lost that game against Columbus as well. We'll get... Dubnik back in and see what he could do here against Columbus as well. Oh, jeez. A 5-2 to two loss. What are we doing? There is eight games left. Or actually, no. Seven games. There's seven games left. And the Islanders still could technically catch us if they go on a run. And especially if we keep losing. There we go. There we go. And, all right, a loss there. But we're close. We're close. Come on, boys. Yep, not a good look against the Rangers there. We kind of needed that win. And now we are forced to go up against three division rivals. Two of them are already in the playoffs in the Capitals and the Flyers. But one, we are competing for for the last playoff spot with the Islanders. So we have to hope that we can either win these two games against the Capitals and Philly. Or that we win against... The Islanders. That's the real. That's the key game here. If we can't win any of these games, we may not be ma be making it into the playoffs, and that would be a huge disappointment. So let's go the final couple of games of the season. Let's finish off strong. Oh man, that is that is a five to two loss, but we have indeed clinched the playoffs. Looks like the Islanders lost a couple of games there, and we've officially clinched. So. We don't have to worry about that game against the Islanders, but you would really like to see this team going in to the playoffs on a hot streak, and that is definitely not what we are doing right now. We are currently on a losing streak, I believe, of, yeah, four-game losing streak, and none of them, or a three-game losing streak, actually, but none of them have been pretty. 4 nothing loss, 6-2 to two loss, and then a 5-2 loss. So I think we're going to switch goaltenders for the final time this regular season, and we are going to get... Robin Leonard back in, presuming he's going to be a starter for the playoffs. He certainly deserves to be because he took us all the way to the Stanley Cup in the previous playoffs. And I did make a few changes to the starting lineups since the last clip. We have Simmons on the second line. We have Severson down on the fourth line because he, I have a feeling he's been holding back the second line. Nico is now a minus 10, Brat is a minus 11, and Severson hasn't gotten a whole ton of points. So I think, yeah, he's probably been holding back that second line a little bit. So we're going to see how Severson does with Zajac and Zaka. Maybe in a bit more of a defensive role as a forward, Severson will do 
much better. That also allows Simmons to get up there with Nico and Brat, get some chemistry back together with them, and maybe we see some improvement in the final couple of games here. There we go. Games against Philly and the Islanders. We have Jack Hughes. No. No. <laughs> Jack Hughes injured with a concussion till May 11th. That, that sucks. That right there sucks. <laughs> We're going to have to put Nico on the first line then, that means. So, Hall, Nico, and Gusev. Yeah, I guess that works. We'll get... Oh, goodness. Uh, is it going to be Coleman? Maybe. Maybe Boquist. It might have to be... Bo yeah, it's going to have to be Boquist. And then I'm going to see if Paul Mary works there. Yeah, we're going to have to get Paul Mary up there. And we'll move Zaka onto the third line with Coleman and Simmons. And then Zajac, Severson, and Armia. And now we have to... Yeah, that's going to mess with all of our power play lines. <laughs> that is a huge injury. So, you know what? That second power play unit's been dead anyway. Let's get Nico up on that top line power play with Goose and Hall. And then Boquist, Armia, Brat, definitely not Armia. Let's get Boquist back at center. And then instead of Armia, we'll get Blake Coleman there. Yeah, that really messed with our lines. So, that is super unfortunate. At least we're going into the playoffs on a 3-0 shutout victory against the Islanders. We finished 41, 30, and 11. Not desirable, but at least we made the playoffs. We didn't embarrass ourselves as the Stanley Cup champions. We at least have another shot at the Stanley Cup. So the end of the season stats, obviously Hughes is injured now. So we don't have him for the, I, I think for the first two rounds. Yeah, that's a huge loss. Oh my goodness. I believe he tied his point total from last year. Yes, he did. One more goal, one less assist. Gusev with 68 points, 34 goals. Hall with 68. He sure with 58. He's going to have to step it up for sure in the playoffs. I know he can as well because he was nearly point per game in the previous playoffs. 21 points in 22 games. P.K. Subban with 58 points. Paul Mary with 49. Bratt with 48. Boquist with 45. Coleman with 32. Butcher with 29, Simmons with 27, Smith with 26, Severson with 24, Zaka with 18, Manson with 18, Tanev with 16, Jamnov with 15, Armia with 12, Zajac with 9, Smith with 1 in 3 games. On the faceoffs, you have Zajac, Heesher, Boquist, and Hughes all above a 50%, so that's what you like to see. Hits, you have Hall, Subban, Palmieri. Manson, Coleman, Simmons, and Severson all above 100. Zaka above a hit per game. And then you have Zajac with 71. Hughes as well with 71. So showed his physical side for sure this year. Nico with 56. Bratt with 49. Bolkus with 49. Goose with 41. Butcher with 37. Armia with 35. Tanev with 35. Smith with 34. Jamnov with 22. Smith with 3. And takeaways to giveaways, Nico was phenomenal, as was Hughes, as was Hall. Boke was 48 to 55, 46 to 45 for Paul Mary, 37 to 46 for Goose, 35 to 54 for Coleman, 35 to 43 for Bratt, 34 to 30 for Simmons, 32 to 27 for Zaka, 30 to 77 for P.K. Subban, but he didn't get a lot of offense, so that doesn't matter too much to me, at least not for him. 29 to 72 for Manson, 27 to 40 for Severson, 26 to 38 for Zajac, 24 to 53 for Butcher, 19 to 18 for Armia, 19 to 50 for Smith, 15 to 42 for Tanev, 9 to 48 for Jamnov, and nothing, nothing for Smith. And a goal, you have Leonard with a 908 save percentage in 46 games, and Dubnik with. As we go into here, because of the split stats, you have a 9.05 for Dubnik. So I'd say we go back to Leonard. We start with Leonard for the playoffs, but if it comes down to it, Dubnik's a good, a really good number two. So now we just have to see who we are facing, and it'll be the Carolina Hurricanes, the 51, 26, and 5 Carolina Hurricanes. That is just great. We'll check out the lines, and we'll end things off. Their first line, Taravainen, Aho, and Svechnikov. Second line, Jesper Fast, Jason Spezza, and Nino Niederreiter. 
The third line, Julian Gauthier, Jordan Stahl, and Josh Anderson. And the fourth line, Jordan Martinuk, Martin Natchez, and Lucas Walmark. And on defense, you have Slavin and Hamilton, Flurry and Suter, and then Gardner with Jake Bean. So a pretty deep defensive core they got here, along with Darcy Kemper and Pekka Rene. And scratched our Pesci and Rick Smith, a rookie of theirs, it looks like. Yep, medium elite. They took him seventh overall in 2020. And the next one, you have Calgary versus Chicago, Vegas versus Anaheim, Colorado versus St. Louis, Winnipeg versus Arizona. And then the East, you have Boston versus Pittsburgh, Toronto versus Buffalo, Washington versus Philly, and the Carolina Hurricanes versus your New Jersey Devils. With that, I will see you guys in the next one when we face Carolina. In round number one of the year three playoffs, and we look to defend our Stanley Cup championship title. See you guys then.